Over the past few years, you may have noticed the growing trend of wealthy Arab sheikhs investing in prestigious sports events. Recent examples of this include Qatar's controversial investment in the 2022 FIFA World Cup and Bahrain's continued partnership with the Formula One Grand Prix. However, beyond these well-established and prestigious global sporting events, various ruling houses in the Gulf have also fancied themselves as patrons of combat sports. As a result, authoritarian regimes and monarchies now act as philanthropists for violent combat sports. The influence of these shares can be felt in a range of sports from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to mixed martial arts. The question remains, however, what do Arab monarchies and socially conservative societies have to gain from promoting niche sports like MMA? To answer this question, we must look at several of the key figures involved in this movement. In 1993, Sheikh Tahnun bin Zayed al Nahyan, the son of then UAE monarch Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, fell in love with combat sports after watching his first UFC event. He eventually took his growing passion for combat sports back to the Middle East and in a few short years founded the Abu Dhabi Combat Club, the ADCC, a martial arts facility equipped with world-class instructors and resources. By 1998, only five years after being introduced to combat sports, Sheikh Tahnoun created the ADCC Submission Wrestling World Championships, an international grappling tournament that became the single most prestigious event of its kind. Over the years, the annual showcase has featured UFC and Pride competitors such as Tito Ortiz, Jeff Munson, Ronaldo Jacare Souza, Fabricio Verdum, and Matt Hughes. Sheikh Tahnoun's ambitions didn't end there. Given his royal blood, he was able to transform the martial art into an official government program and incorporate it into the local education system. Even former UFC champion George St. Pierre publicly stated that Sheikh Tahnoun is driving mixed martial arts in the UAE. Twelve years after Sheikh Tahnoun kindled interest in BJJ, a deal between Flash Entertainment, a subsidiary of the UAE government, and the UFC came to fruition. By January 12, 2010, the UFC announced that Flash Entertainment, a state-owned entertainment company in the United Arab Emirates, had acquired a 10% stake in Zufa LLC, the promotion's parent company. While all parties involved had high expectations for the partnership, the UFC Flash Entertainment relationship remains a tumultuous one that reaps little benefit for either the UFC or Flash Entertainment. The problems began when the promotion hosted its first event in the Middle East, UFC 112 Invincible. At the time, the event was a unique occasion because it was held outside in an open-air arena and broadcast on pay-per-view at 1 p.m. Eastern Time due to the time difference. However, a lackluster main event between Anderson Silva and Damian Maia put an end to the UFC's hopes of aggressive expansion into the Middle East. While the UFC would not return to Abu Dhabi for another four years, the promotion was unable to avoid the controversy and human rights concerns that accompanied their dealings with the UAE government. The promotion announced a return to Abu Dhabi in April 2014, which was met with editorials condemning the UFC's decision to work with human rights offenders. Much of the controversy surrounded the Guardian's investigation into the abuse of migrant workers trapped in the Middle East. Most work and live in abysmal conditions and are unable to leave because employers withhold their passports from them. Given that both the UFC's ventures into Abu Dhabi took place in open-air arenas that were erected overnight and quickly torn down, there was significant concerns that such abuses took place on the work site setting up the UFC shows. Despite the long list of issues that make the UFC's partnership with an authoritarian regime a significant public relations blunder, the promotion continues to work with Flash Entertainment even going so far as to release a statement to Bloody Elbow's Brent Brookhouse in support of their partner. While the UAE has been remarkably influential in combat sports, it isn't the only Gulf state that has heavily invested in its Middle Eastern development. Approximately 850 kilometers northwest of Abu Dhabi lies Bahrain, another Gulf kingdom equally determined to become a significant player in the world of combat sports. Dating back to 2015, Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa the fifth son of Bahrain's King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa has invested heavily in mixed martial arts. He financed the development of the island nation's first fully functional MMA fight club and training facility, KHK MMA, 
and later founded Bahrain's first MMA promotion, Brave Combat Federation. In the months that followed, Sheikh Khaled began to recruit renowned coaches, including Conor McGregor's own coach, John Kavanaugh, and prominent UFC fighters like former lightweight champion Frankie Edgar and undefeated Dagestani fighter Khabib Nurmagomedov to join the upstart team in Bahrain. Those who joined the KHK MMA team were given access to elite resources at no cost, including medical coverage, a rare deal in the combat sports realm. The Prince also sponsors fighters like Edgar to wear the Bahraini flag during his appearance on UFC broadcast. On one particular occasion at the Tough 22 finale, Sheikh Khaled actually accompanied Edgar to the octagon. Sheikh Khaled primarily serves as first lieutenant in Bahrain's armed forces, but quickly became fascinated in the development of local sports. Apart from being the deputy chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth Sports, he has personally competed in a pair of amateur MMA fights and regularly trains at the KHK facility. Yet despite his seemingly down-to-earth image, Sheikh Khaled is a member of a monarchy that continues to commit shocking human rights violations and even uses sports to distract from their violent domestic policies. In 2011, waves of revolutionary protests crashed into unsuspecting regimes across the Arab world. However, with the support of Saudi Arabia's military might, the Al Khalifa monarchy was able to suppress the uprising with the use of excessive force, forced disappearances, and well-documented torture tactics. One of the men personally alleged to have tortured Bahraini citizens was Sheikh Khalid's full brother, Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. In the six years that followed the Arab Spring, Bahrain's monarchy continued to oppress the vast majority of its population in an attempt to maintain control of the throne. Tactics such as the dissolution of political parties, passport confiscations, and torture became common practice. In order to fabricate an image of peace and prosperity within the island kingdom, Bahrain began to invest in sports as a way to garner state prestige on an international stage. To date, Bahrain has used the Formula One Grand Prix event, the Olympic Games, cycling, and MMA in its plans to cement legitimacy and enhance their image abroad. Prestigious events like the Formula One race help Bahrain transform from an unknown island into a tourist destination in the Middle East, while simultaneously distracting from ongoing human rights abuse. It is evidently clear that sports, even violent ones like MMA, can be politicized for the benefit of despots, tyrants, and military rulers looking to cement their authority and enhance their tattered images abroad.